ma isa pandekaru se dera ha egre mo yung rios. How are you? How's your afternoon? So, in my name is Leo Rios. I just say good morning. And her why uh, we speak two languages. We speak Guarani and the Castellano, which is Castilian. It comes from Spain. And Spanish, more known, but more popular. And uh, so it's uh, one of the few countries in the Americas that is actually bilingual. That there are only, I think, four or five countries that actually officially are bilingual. And Paraguay is one of them. Um, so I want to say first, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate that you took the time, your afternoon. And I'm really excited to share with you uh, many things about my beautiful country, Paraguay, and the work that this group and several different uh, works that can be done in the world or in our own backyard, in our own city or town or neighborhood. Uh, this is my family, my wife, Lidia Lagoda Rios, and my goal is Dante Rios and Alejandro Rios. No more as uh, Alex. Yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Gregorio. Um, we're, uh, we're at Terei. We are very excited to be here. And that means I am very happy in Guarani. And so we'll be talking about Peace Corps and how that has uh, changed all of our lives um, to bring us who, to who we are today. So um, having said that, this is our family story. We're excited to share it with you today. And we'll move on uh, to our next slide. Actually, the reason that we are here today is in fact because it is um, Peace Corps anniversary. That is, it started in uh, March 1st, uh, 1961 by Kennedy. And um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful way of sharing culture, learning about ourselves and each other through service. And I went to the Chapel Bar of Life. May I have the pointer, please? So I'm going to step over here and just talk about where I was. So Paraguay is about the size of California, but with about the eighth of a population. You'll notice here it's surrounded by Brazil, Argentina, and Bolivia. And I was way up in the northern part of the Chaco, not the very north, but to the northern part of the Chaco. And the area that I was in was called San Tom. So I was with uh, about 100 people, about 15 families. And I did everything from <laughs> deliver a baby to bring someone to the hospital for um, cu cutting himself with a machete, we'll leave it at that. Um, so it was an interesting t time and experience to be a point of contact in the middle of nowhere. I had no electricity, no running water. I lived in an adobe hut. Uh, we do have the clay pot here today, and we'll show that later where I actually, that's where I drink my water from. So there was no hot water, it was 100, or cold water, there was, it was 120 degrees sometimes. And so nobody even moved until nine o'clock, or they moved early in the morning, like at four or five in the morning, and then at around nine or 10, that's where you could sit and just start to relax because it was getting so hot already. And that was the only cold water I had. So I had to take it from the Takamar, which was rainwater, and then I had to sift it and then put it into this cool, um, clay pot and then I had it in the soil and that's how I maintained cold water. So again, this is up in this area. Um, I started out as an, well, I was an ag forester, um, which means planting tree species into the agriculture field, so nitrogen fixing species to kind of feed uh, the soils and keep them fresh and healthy for continued uh, crops. And I was also working in collaborative youth development, so we had um, youth coming from all different parts 
that we would collaborate with and do educational uh, work with them. Um, conservation Ed was also a part of that, and that was really much about our natural resources and, and most of um, our, how we're taking care of our world, not just in the small communities that they have, but on a larger scale as well. And beekeeping was a way to do that as well. We have a lot of beekeeping here in Rifle, and so we love that. And um, we've got more to come on that here at the library. So I'm putting a plug in for the library now. Keep your eye out for 2024. There's something really fun coming. Um, but beekeeping is a big part of their um, additional income in the Paraguay or in the Chaco Paraguay. Um, most of these folks, these families, were ranchers and farmers, but they would sell their milk uh, for income. And there were no vehicles. They used uh, motos, which you'll see a little bit later. And um, the milk truck would come in every morning and every afternoon, and oftentimes it would, we'd have the rains because it was a rainy season and a dry season, similar to parts of Africa. And so because of that, it would often get flooded out or just so muddy that a truck couldn't come in, and then they'd have to make cheese. And so um, I was a part of all of that. Um, they welcomed me in, and they taught me everything about their culture and community and their way of life. And uh, health was also a big part of what I did. Um, there was a, you know, I worked with a midwife. Um, they were delivering babies in their own homes where the midwife had been there for 35 years. They did not have the money to go into the cities and to have their babies in hospitals. So they often had to have them in the countryside. Um, so health, um, just general health, even from earaches to you know, colds and how they uh, were able to get through day in and day out. Um, also, we did a lot of collaboration with other Peace Corps volunteers, health and wellness volunteers. So they came in and we built pagodas because many of those women would cook over pots. And so that was really bad on their back and big black pots and all that smoke into their lungs. So we worked on a project where we uh, provided um, a, kind of a stove for them out of clay. Um, it was amazing. I can't even believe that it was something that, <laughs> that we, we, we really made happen. Um, public engagement, of course, people from you know, all of the different parts of the community coming together and, and, and working together in collaboration. Um, the culture and awareness. So that's really the primary thing, and now I'm gonna let Dante talk about um, the three goals of Peace Corps. Thank you. Well, the three goals of Peace Corps are to help the people of any African country with dignity, poor training in women. Second, to promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the people served. And three, to promote a better understanding of other peoples on the part of Americans. Thank you.
cultural art. And this is with cold water, so it's called Tedere. And you might hear in Argentina, they do it with hot water. And well, they do it in Paraguay as well. And that is mate. And so that's a little bit about what Alex was talking about. And then also, um, their main form of, of transportation is motos. But in the Peace Corps, we are not allowed to use those because of the safety. So, and so if people are interested in the Peace Corps, just a quick a little more about that is it's a year long process. Um, you have to go through a number of interviews and it is something that the government is taking care of you and there are liabilities. So they do expect you to behave a certain way, do a certain thing, you have a three month you know, um, training. Um, it's very extensive and they, take, they do take good care of it. It's kind of like military, but more on the other side of things, like the education and proactive. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful program. Um, so this jumps into today and age. Um, I was afforded an opportunity to work for the Department of Agriculture with the U.S. Forest Service on the Rifle Range. A district brought me to Rifle and brought our family to Rifle. And I do want to connect that those dots. Um, if you go back just a few slides real quick, and if you'll hand me the, the um, pointer. Thank you. So I did meet my husband, right here, thank you. So I did meet my husband in Puerto Rico. He's from this area called Vilar. And he was um, sharing with you a little bit earlier um, regarding, um, you know, their culture and background, and how he's very excited to, to share um, his his country. Um, so I was up here, he was down here, and we met in Asuncion, and that's how we connected during the Peace Corps. So that's also another reason why it's so important to me to share and give back the Peace Corps um, because it afforded me an amazing uh, family. So um, he'll talk a little bit more about his culture. He's got a shirt that he's, and some of these other things that um, he'll be sharing a little bit later. But I did want to connect that piece. And then if you'll forward back to please um, the Rifle Range District. So when we came back to the United States, we were able to um, move into a community like this um, because of our opportunities with Spanish. I picked up Spanish and he was becoming bilingual. And then in addition, my background with uh, Colorado State University was um, managed, it, well, ecosystem science. So I was a range program manager and I had an opportunity to come onto the rifle district. And so I've been there ever since. Um, so I work with ranchers, which is the connection also with the Peace Corps. And then ag forestry, again, going back to those roots and then ecosystem management. So this is me on my horse a long time ago. I'm moving out of this phase, hanging up my spurs and moving on into the supervisor's office. But um, I, like I said, once again, it's been an amazing ride. And now my next, uh, my son is going to talk next. Or dad, there we go, there's oh. dad. Okay, now you need to connect, <laughs> yes. So through Peace Corps, Um, and there was a program, or there's still a program, that uh, is working with teachers in a different uh, uh, countries. And this one, this program is in Mongolia. And so um, we did a three months of uh, community service in Mongolia, it's, uh, in a small town by Anugi. And um, I, my wife, Lydia, was teaching English uh, at the college level. Uh, they needed help, so they asked me if I would. And I said, of course. Um, so I was teaching uh, middle school and high school. Uh, in, um, so uh, we did uh, work, I think, if you want to help me, Jill. Oh sure, I can um, jump in there as well. Yes. So I'm making a very, very, t uh, a kind of a not very good picture of Mongolia here. But up here is uh, Russia. Here's China. Okay, and here 
we've got Kazakhstan and Turkey, and then you go into, there's a, there, I mean, you, the Middle East has all started in this area. So this is Mongolia, okay? And we were in this little area, well, it's actually, uh, Baye Mulgi is about 100,000 people. And this, of all of Mongolia, which is mostly um, Buddhist, um, this was a Muslim community. So we lived in Bayanogi, and we were sent there, again, that connection through Peace Corps, which is that thread that kind of ties all this together. Um, they contacted us, and they were looking for an, uh, an opportunity with a family. Most people that do this type of work will often do it on their own, either early or late in life. Um, it is very difficult to bring your family across the world and to live for several months. And um, we took advantage of that opportunity and we were afforded once again by our physicians um, that allowed us a sabbatical so we could go and give back. Um, again, service is kind of a thread um, for all of us, but especially my husband and I, to give back to others. We, we enjoy public service as hard as it can be sometimes. So um, Greg already mentioned, Gregorio mentioned that we um, taught um, in two different um, arenas. One was college, one was the um, Midland uh, High School. But teaching the teachers was really some of the most rewarding things that we had. So we were super excited to be able to learn um, from others and learn how to be a teacher because we did not have, I mean, other than life experience, we didn't have any formal classroom uh, training. And so here in this country, being a teacher is like being an attorney or a doctor. It is the most revered. And so uh, we learned uh, so much about what it takes to really bring education to students and not just um, in general, but also way out in the middle of a place where, you know, these are, this is a pioneer country with three million people and 45 million livestock. So you can already tell they're 30% nomadic um, we have just loads of pictures on Mongolia, so we were trying to thread things for Peace Corps this time. But um, we could do a whole presentation on, on just Mongolia. Um, but yes, technical and programmatic advice and cultural programs. My husband also uh, does a lot with CPR and first aid, so we did classes in a community such as a community area such as a library. Um, and then we also, uh, like I did yoga and shared about health and wellness. Um, I could go on for days about there's just so many things and so many opportunities there. Even libraries are struggling to find books. So the, our contact through Peace Corps was who lives in Switzerland sends books on a regular basis. Um, and Dante has um, a shirt, Genghis Khan. Um, Dante, do you want to just say a couple of things? Um, yeah. Well, he was Mongolian's warlord, I guess, and he was one of the main reasons he was trying to build the Great Wall of China because he was nomadic and he basically just conquered the territory of China like Alexander the Great. Conquistador. And he was a great warrior, but also with all of that came a lot of, um, lo loss of a lot of resources and also lost a lot of education to the, um, the general public. So, um, Building that back up is still going on to this day, I would say. Okay, we can move on. Um, so can you use pictures of us kind of dangling up here? Is there like a monument over like to the left, like to where the picture is on here? But that's by Mulugi in the back, and this is like the roof next to our Mulugi, but I don't remember what it's called. But this is us just standing over the roof. This is us getting into the Russian model band. Um, about to get on, just getting ready for a trip to go up to the mountain. And this was like our um, translator and like the, the guy, just to you know, go and get ready and push the fire a little bit. This is livestock, so basically Mongolia is like, has no fences how we do. So their farms are basically just open patches of land. So like livestock can get out and get in the trash, trashes and stuff. And as you can see, they burn the trash. And that's, sometimes that's why all the trash ends up on the ground. Um, this is a family from Turkish that owns a restaurant that we were eating at. Um, that was the best for a while because we couldn't handle mutton because we were busy, just weren't used to the diet. Dante, what is mutton? Is, mutton is um, like old lamb or old meat, like old sheep meat that's just frozen. Basically.
this into like uh, McDonald's burgers. And so here is, this is the, the directors from the school that my dad was working at. And this is just sitting down and eating and have like conversation and stuff. This is, I believe, a family selling a cow and they're just selling and putting it in the back of the car. This is the school that my parents worked at and just in the school around where we live. Um, here is a wedding present from a family to another family with a mother and a calf just putting in the back of a Jeep. And me and my family thought that they would not fit. And evidently they made the both of the men fit in the car. And this is traditional wear on like one of our last few nights that we stayed. They didn't have any wear for us, but they were just traditional wear for my parents. Very good, Dante. Just a couple of clarifications. Um, so nothing to McDonald's. So, but just to say in general that mutton is like it's it, they're aged um, sheep. So they they're older sheep, and they will not kill their lambs. They keep them. Here we eat a lot of lamb. There they wait, and they actually keep them, or they will sell them for a lot higher price to China or Russia, and then they they eat themselves the older lamb and they call it mutton, and they'll make like a dumpling, and that's uh, very common um, for that culture. Um, lots of candy, there's a whole history as to why candy is so, um, uh, something they put out when you come into their home, um, because of sugar, and that was a sign of wealth uh, back in many years ago. Um, so again, also just a couple of things about just their, um, similar to Salt Lake City, we, we all know Salt Lake City and how it can be very um, bogged down with um, smog. It's the same in parts of Mongolia because of the way the mountain range is around them. So um, it can really bog down. Um, well, all of that, that uh, burning will sit right into that uh, valley. Um, I think that's it, but this was a nearby area. We had, but there were several schools in, um, in and around the area that we live. I think that's it, wonderful. And this is called the Dombra. And then remember there's both Kazakh and there are uh, Mongolian. This is more Mongolian, this type of art. And Kazakh is uh, more of this style that you'll see. And this is just a little rug. You would see the, the yurts and gurs are just adorned with all of this. And the gurs are what they use um, to uh, live in as they move around. And we, there's, like I said, there's, we'll, we'll have a whole nother presentation on that at another time. Okay, I will let you go on. Oh, is this me? Oh, sorry, guys. Okay, so again, writing some of the work um, that was done with Peace Corps, because of my affiliation with Peace Corps, once again, it, op it offered me another opportunity to work in rangeland management as an expert um, with uh, the United States Forest Service in Ethiopia. And again, some similarities to all of these countries are just, like for example, we talked about yerba mate, and we talked about mutton um, from the different cultures and their different practices. Well, one for Ethiopia is coffee, um, and this is buna. So buna is coffee, and that is um, something that they share um, all day long, um, similar to kind of what we do here. In fact, parts of Ethiopia supply um, our Starbucks coffee here. So anyway, again, professional development, educate or become educated, perspective and appreciation. Again, all the same threads of Peace Corps and what they encourage. Please. Uh, um, and I, again, quickly, I'll just kind of end with um, the, the biggest picture um, that I want people to be left with is Peace Corps sets that uh, seed for sharing culture and sharing, um, sharing your, your practices and your best, your best habits. And I think that for us, that's one thing we want to continue to do. We want to share ours and we want to learn from others. And um, that's also going to help our environment. That's also going to help um, us to continue to work together with our changing world 
both you know with people and our environment. Um, so again, this is just lots of pictures from my experience there in rangeland management. Here we are laying, where, laying transects and trying to identify the plant species and talking about grazing management. This is the team here. I had about 120 people uh, in my workshop. I had three different uh, regions um, and 40 in each. And then these camels are revered. Um, they were at, this was at a sale, kind of like a cattle sale. They do it with camels. This is me drinking um, uh, cam camel's milk. And in Mongolia, Dante, we all you know ate horse and drank mare's milk. So, you know, it's, uh, which is horse milk. So every culture has something just a little different, but it's kind of the same. And then here we are, you know, edu this is teaching, teaching each other, which I love. So I captured that. Um, but again, working together, sharing together, sharing ideas and best practices. And we can go forward, please. Okay. And then finally, this is this last one. I want my husband talk about this a little bit because this is his country. Um, so you can just read these bullets here. Okay, the and then talk about that. The ESPS manual uh, for beef, blue, and multi stakeholders dialogue. Cattle ranching, model farms, current farm systems, producers, communication, plan for beef producers, financial instruments, market access and prices, support certification and trace traceability, recognition of good actors. This is basically another opportunity that was um, in front of why, again, through the U.S. Forest Service and affiliation with Food Corps. So the work that had started here um, then moved into Gregorio's country. This is the Chaco, and you can see ag forestry, and that's put into the ag system. So you can see all the hay, but you see all the trees that are interspersed. And so that ag forestry model will hopefully and likely come here, because otherwise we're just slashing and burning large, you know, just covers of land, and that's not going to be sustainable. So ag forestry is becoming now, even though it was something initiated through Peace Corps and small um, farming, it's now coming into a larger picture. Um, and so when one of the last times I went with for, for USAID and the Department of Ag, um, it was for, um, again, multi-stakeholder, working with ranches and farmers, and again, going through from the time that I started with Peace Corps through my work now through the US Forest Service and in other parts of the world, um, now we are coming to this place where we really need to understand, especially through drought and all these other, all these other climatic changes coming, we need to be able to help each other. So Peace Corps has really kind of opened that for all of us, um, in, in my mind. And the final slide. And thank you guys for all of us. Thank you. Um, how you can get involved and volunteer locally, like we are now. And um, how does that play in? And you can also go to ch church and mission work, which is just like just your church. You just go around and do basically what my mom does for the church. Um, Peace Corps, which is what my mom and dad do. Uh, AmeriCorps, which is basically a Peace Corps, but I guess it's at a Baptist. And you can also donate to uh, Peace Corps and AmeriCorps. Uh, we would like to thank our friends and family who supported us and, and encouraged us throughout our from traveling, from planning, and just all our learning. And it, contact information if you have any questions. It's uh, my dad's Gregorios, his, his Yahoo, and my mom's Lydia Labelle's Yahoo as well. Uh, there is an error at the bottom of this. Oh. It's actually .es, not .org. So please contact us, and let's before we wrap this up. I don't know if we have a. This is our final um, slide. Our final slide. But um, again, you don't have to leave the country to be involved in any of this work. You can be uh, a part of this even at home. There's many ways to serve our communities. There's many ways to exchange culture, and there are many ways um, to learn from each other. I mean, we can learn from New York to Texas. There's all kinds of differences right here. There's even differences from Glenwood to Rifle. So you don't have to go far, you just have to have a little patience and maybe some listening skills, and which we are all working on, at least in my family. And um, 
I would say that uh, AmeriCorps, if you're interested in any of these, we can kind of guide you in the right place. So please reach out to us. Um, America's only a year, Peace Corps is two years. Um, and then all of these other opportunities can be uh, local. Would you like to say anything, Gregory? Oh, we just do a wedding call. Thank you for coming today, and thank you to my kids um, for you know being the best that you could be. It's hard to get up in front of people, so thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. We're using the countryside most of the time. Um, we keep the water here so it stays cool in the shade inside the, the houses. Um, when I used to go to the countryside to visit my grandma, we used to have one lease, and that's where we save all the water and keep it cool uh, all the time. This is hamaca, this is an hamaca. This is a hammock, it's made of, this one is made, it's made in Paraguay. And it's, the weather is so beautiful and tropical that in the after, during the afternoon or we can, even the morning at any time, even though so it's, um, so we use it for babies. They can just hang out there or just fall asleep take a little siesta, the same for the parents or anybody, and it's a little break. We have Jerba Mate in this case, we have the Campesino, uh, and so we use Jerba Mate to drink our tea, in this case this is a ma the Termo with uh, Wampa, we call it with Mate, it's, um, it has leather in the outside, it's, it's a, a traditional and an artisanal in Paraguay, so this is uh, for the terere, also use yerba mate. And it's made of corn, and I see it's a memory and it's a gift from my, well, it's my favorite team, soccer team in Paraguay. So, and here we have some tea, manzanilla. We have another tea, it's burrito, we call it burrito, which is pretty interesting because it's, in this case it's a tea, and we know in Mexico they call burrito to so, to a meal to a, uh, a food. In this case, we have a tea named burrito, burrito in Paraguay. Cocido is also another different way of doing tea. It's really good. We every every morning um, before we go to school, our breakfast was uh, similar to latte. Um, the way it's uh, some companies are doing here, but it was a uh, cocido with milk, the tea with milk, and then some uh, chilipitas, and which is similar, chilipitas are similar to cornbread, but it's, it's, it's a different way of making it, but that was our breakfast before going to school. Uh, this is, um, we use it for smashing the herbs, so we use a lot of medicinal, medicinal herbs in Paraguay, which is we mix it and we smash each other, we each other all together, smash it, and then we put it in the, uh, for the mate or the terere. The terere is cold water, and we mix it with the medicinal herbs, and it goes inside with the cold water, and then you pretty much, this is a rumbilla, and it has a filter. It's like a straw with a filter. Uh, inside here we put the yerba mate, and the cold water with the mix of medicinal herbs, it gets just right there. You serve that, you brew it, and it brews by itself, and then you start drinking it from there. Can I ask uh, a question? Yes, of course. It brews by itself in that cup? Yeah, you just right away, you just, um, serve the water, the cold water in this case, uh -huh. and then you just drink it. And when you drink it, you you drink the uh, all the flavor and the herbs, medicinal herbs, and whatever you you have here, you mix the medicinal herbs here too. Which is uh, there's so many medicinal herbs uh, that we learn from the indigenous, from uh, the Guaranias. Uh, which is we use it every day at home 
with and they use it with uh, the babies and the, the children and adults. Uh, I mean, just burrito, albahaca, um, uh, cedron, capi. There's so many, so many different ones. Um, here, this picture uh, is uh, the traditional, uh, traditional uh, cloth of dance from Paraguay, uh, which is we we call it polka. Uh, another thing that Paraguay has also lots of influence from. We have people um, from Germany. We have uh, Mennonites. We have from Ukraine. We have uh, communities from. Uh, in Chinese, South Korea, uh, Saudi Arabia. We have from different parts of uh, Europe and the world, we have uh, communities in Paraguay. Uh, this is the mate, this is from the Peace Corp, uh, also the wampa, we call it. Here we have the camels, uh, uh, two humps, is the one, this one from Mongolia, which is uh, Asia. This one was in Ethiopia, right? Is that right? Yes, correct. Africa. Yeah, it's only one half there, yeah? Yes. It's a, yeah. Uh, these are myths and legends from Paraguay. We are actually missing some of them, uh, but they're, uh, it's a, uh, make it long story, make it short. Uh, there are seven brothers uh, and, uh, were um, cursed by the gods. And well, it was a Saul and Kerana, they got together. It was prohibited the love, but they still ran away and they had seven boys. And the curse was uh, every boy or every born child was going to be a monster. So we have as uh, uh, Luison, Alao, Boito E, Kurupi, Jasiya Tere, Maladicion is one of them and um, Ao Ao, uh, so there are several, uh, well, seven brothers. And uh, this is, uh, is an art from uh, Paraguay, it's uh, from the indigenous Guaranis, the Guaranis. Uh, pantalla, this is a pantalla, what we use normally in the kitchen when uh, to start the fire when we're cooking, we still use wood and we, and also when it's hot, uh, we use it <laughs> to keep ourselves cool. Uh, we have, now we're going towards, uh, this is another one, is from Paraguay, Paraguay, it has a Opoi, and it's a beautiful pantalla, um, which is in English, pantalla? What's that? Pe. Pe, okay, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> so um, here we have, um, some gifts from our friends from Mongolia. Uh, we have the traditional hat for winter from Mongolia. Uh, it's great and it's warm, really nice. We have uh, some Kazakh and Mongolian traditional um, hats, I should say. Uh, these are uh, yurt also. We had some uh, Keychain from Mongolia. The hammock is from Paraguay. Um, this was a beautiful gift from a student in Mongolia, which is Allah. And um, um, every time I think about it, it's, it's um, I don't know, brings me back great memories. Uh, it was a beautiful community, a Muslim community. Um, they were amazing with us, uh, they took care of us, and um, there was, this was a gift from one of the students and to wish me luck in life and, and in the future. Uh, see, we're going back, and I want to say thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, this is another tema from Paraguay, a little bit of uh, Costa Rica, I was a chaperone for a month and volunteering with the 4-H. It was a great experience. Uh, I had uh, probably 12 uh, kids that were in Costa Rica for a month. They learned so much about the culture, the people, the food, the language, the music, geography, economy, 
uh, agriculture. Uh, it was it was a great experience. Uh, I know, uh, yes, uh, the people from uh, Costa Rica, beautiful people. I still keep in touch with them. They're like family for me too. And uh, it was a great experience. And I can't wait to go and visit them again. And uh, it's something that, you know, um, you don't have to go around the world or, you know, it's, it's a great way of knowing the different cultures and understanding the culture and understanding why they do things the way they do it. And you can also help your neighbors. You can do uh, locally some uh, community work. And there's so many simple things that you can do to help your own community, your country, um, your friends, your family. Thank you very much to the library. Thank you so much, Alex, and uh, all our friends that came here to visit us. Thank you.